the you know one of the things too you also talk about is in chapter 21 you talk about follow-up and uh, you quote in there 73 percent of all sales leads are never followed up yes and and you know and I'll tell you the source of that sure, well no no I mean, there is a source obviously right. of it, but but the, the idea I'm gonna ask you you know first of all you tell me about the source but secondly is you know what's the impact and what can people do obviously start following up which is a dumb question but you know what 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 can they actually do Talk about a huge opportunity, right? Yeah. If you're a salesperson, what a huge opportunity. So the source of that came from studies that InsideSales.com has conducted. You know, they did the original uh, online sales lead uh, follow-up study with the researchers from MIT back in 2007, and they've continually updated it. So that was a statistic that I'd read a year or so ago in my research and was just uh, validated by Ken Crow, president of InsideSales.com, that he talked about in a a speech that he gave recently, about two weeks ago in Minneapolis. Um, wow, you know, to me, sales leads are like <laughs> are like an ATM machine, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because somebody wants to talk to you. And what sales hasn't done in general is they haven't changed their mindset about the value of leads. Now, I've, I've been in business for a long time. Yeah, initially, when I started selling before the internet, is came around or right before the internet not to date myself too much is that the customer when they want information about my product or service they had one source and that was me but now and so they had no choice if they were just sort of wanting to kick the tires they wanted to find out a little bit about the product they had no place else to go but to contact me so yeah a lot of the leads were or leads that came in they were not valid leads but that's not much the case today right somebody's gone online they've researched your product your company your service they're reaching out to you. Uh, they're not doing it because they're just idly curious about you. I mean, I, I ask people when I talk to large audiences. Yeah, you know, I talked to a group of several hundred, and recently, and I had you know show of hands. How many of you just visit websites? You know, if you're sort of interested, you fill out the contact me. You know, you want that salesperson to call you up on Sunday or Monday or whenever. Well, no one does. No one raised their hand. They're going to do it for a purpose because they know they're giving somebody permission to talk to them. Yep. And so these days, if you're getting a lead, it's somebody that's interested. Are they going to become a qualified prospect for your product? Not necessarily. Not everybody's a fit. But it is a valid lead and it deserves to be followed up. So in my first book, I gave an example. If you just did the rough math, is, is say, okay, let's assume that 50% of sales leads aren't followed up. Well, there are $24 billion on worth of scratch-off lottery tickets sold in the U.S. every year. And I think a lead is like a scratch-off lottery ticket. You know, you just don't know what you're going to get until you scrape the surface and you engage with it. Now, does anybody think that 50% of those are $12 billion worth of scratch-off lottery tickets are sitting around unscratched, you know, in your desk drawer or your glove, your club, <laughs> or not your golf cart, your car, or your sock drawer at home? Of course not. You know, people don't even walk out of the door of the convenience store before they scratched them off. Well, that's the way salespeople should be responding to leads. They're not all going to be winners, but you know for sure that the unscratched lottery ticket doesn't pay a prize. 